videos of different kinds of plays and things that happen in baseball. Um, but one that struck me this last week was a, uh, a game that uh, the Texas Rangers were playing with somebody. I, I think it might have been the Minnesota Twins. But anyway, so they're out on the field. There's a guy on first. And suddenly there's this clap of thunder that drops almost everyone on the, on the field to their knees. And those that weren't on their knees were running off of the field. <laughs> These are guys that make millions of dollars to hit the ball three times out of ten. And it, what was so amazing to me was that they just, uh, that was the only reaction they had. They were just down and then running. And it just, it just reminded me, and there's a couple of you, if you go on YouTube, this is fun, because I just typed in thunder in a baseball game, and all of a sudden, there's a whole bunch of things. You know, these guys are on the bench, and they're all just kind of, yeah, joking, and then the thunder hits, and they all go, oh, oh. What was that? Anyway. <laughs> The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. And uh, I've never heard louder um, thunder than I have in the Midwest. I've spent a lot of time in the Midwest, but when I've been there and it thunders, it, it, it does. It shakes the whole earth. And it was just fun to see uh, <laughs> how people respond to it. Because the truth is, I think if we ever saw the presence of God, what would we do? I think we would just fall. I think we would just fall. And the voice of God in the same way. That's why we are here this coming week to be able to ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Um, and I love the way that this anthem continues to remind us. He's not just the God of Love. He's not just the God of light. He's not just the Lord of life or the Lord of all. Um, he is, I, I guess there's a difference in my mind in some ways. When I say God is love, and then I say he is the Lord of love. Because I think of it in terms when I sing he's the, the, the God of love or God is love. It's kind of like a descriptor. When I say he's Lord of love, in my mind, if he is Lord, he's the one who defines it, he is the one who rules by it and commands it, he is the one who preserves it and maintains it. That, that to me is, a, is an umbrella that just kind of strikes me. And why the scripture, when, especially when you look through the Psalms, you're going to notice more times than not, it's always going to say the steadfast love. It's just, it's just what he is and how he defines himself. Nehemiah said, I said, O oh Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Now, if you're like me, sometimes I can read a, a verse like that. He keeps his steadfast, steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. And then I start questioning myself. Do I love him? Do I keep his commandments? So I start feeling the weight of glory upon my shoulders, <laughs> if you're anything, like I said, like me. And I think Jude captures something uh, in his writing that helps us, under at least helps me understand, so let me share it with you. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. Now, when I read something like that, I feel like there's some responsibility I have, right? I believe God keeps me in his love. I believe it's his grace that keeps me in his love. But I believe God is saying to us, we need to keep ourselves in tune with that, right? So what does that mean? Um, well, Jesus himself said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. And I believe that when we think of that, especially if you say, if you keep, if, if Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. And so there's, this, there's an attitude of, or, or actually a, a truth about our behavior that's really in the essence of keep my commandments, then you will abide in my love. Um, 
one of the things that I find in the Christian church a lot is when somebody says, if you keep my commandments, then you love me. And most of the time, people define keep my commandments as there's nothing between you and me. As opposed to the second half of the greatest commandment that says, love everyone else. I got a, there are a lot of people I come in contact with that says, I do all my praying, I do my Bible reading, I do all this and I do all this, and so I feel great. And then I watch the way they treat other people. And I think to myself, you're halfway there. <laughs> because keep my commandments is not just a behavior thing, a personal behavior thing. It has everything to do as well with how you relate to other people. And what you do with other people helps you to keep that commandment as well. And I, I just, to, to me, I just feel like it's such an important thing to, to admonish my own heart because um, I was, in the sense that even Jude makes that comment, he continues, the next verse after that says, and have mercy on those who doubt. So I think Jude knew this. It's not just a question of, hey, is there anything with you and God? It's, hey, is there anything with, between you and, and all these people that are my children as well? He says, have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear. See, that has everything to do with keeping the commandment, but it's so all you know, focused on everybody else rather than just your own heart. So my hope is, is that as we sing this anthem, that we're singing a truth that I think is really important. <clears throat> he is the God of glory. He is the Lord of love. And the way that we keep ourselves in the love of God is truly holding to his word, knowing who he is. But at the same time, there's an obedience factor in there. But it's not just between you and God. It's between you and everybody else. I believe the church would flourish if we understood the idea of keep my commandments, having everything to do with the people around me as it does my, my vertical relationship with God. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. So maybe in that sense it would give us a little different view as we enter into this anthem, as we sing the Our God of Glory, Lord of Love, because we're asking him to do a, a lot of things here. Um, we seek, it says, we seek your face, uh, keep us with you to the end. That is a prayer we have to do because God is our sustainer, right? May we walk forever in your sight, Lord of life, Lord of all, Lord to you. It's not just that we never know when the, when the thunder is going to hit. The other thing is we never know when he's going to come back, but we know he's coming back. And when he does come back, I think it's going to be the same thing that I saw in that baseball field. Everybody should just go, right? And whether they even look up after that would be something else as well. But be our guide. Um, in your arms abide. Lead us from earth to heaven. Our sins forgive and hear us when we pray. Bless the church this holy day, right? And that, that has everything to do with what I, I believe keeping the commandment has <coughs> to do with. It's us. It's us together. All right, let's see what we remember this. Let's see what happens. <laughs>